a family outing in Lewis Bay, Hyannisport for the Kennedys. The president, accompanied by his convalescing father, his brothers, and a full complement of children, relaxes from the cares of Washington with a day on the water. Mrs. Kennedy swims with astronaut John Glenn, a weekend guest, before they team up to put on an aqua show of their own. The president stays on the sidelines as Mrs. Kennedy and high-flying Glenn practically go into orbit aboard water skis. Mrs. Ethel Kennedy, wife of the Attorney General, is at the controls of the towboat, and she turns on the steam. The astronaut and the First Lady put on a dazzling show, the Hyannisport Watercade of 1962. Aronimink Golf Club near Philadelphia sees the PGA Jinx work against Arnold Palmer, fresh from his British Open win. He has never won the PGA, and today rivals like Bob Golby run far ahead. Golby is hot on the fourth and final round, and the crowd sees him duel down to the final hole with Gary Player, the South African whiz kid. In this 44th professional golfer's scramble, the crowd is treated to a brand of super golf, along with some heartbreakers. When George Bayer misses a two-footer on the 18th, he has to settle with a tie for third place. There's high drama on the 18th green as Player eases a 35-footer to within two feet of the cup. That gives him a short one for a par four and the match, unless Bob Goldby could have come up with a birdie from 25 feet out. He's close, but he stays one stroke behind. Then the $13,000 putt that makes player the first non-resident to win this title. He appears overwhelmed as he lifts the ball from the cup. Gary Player, with his card of 278, takes the title by one stroke. A storybook finish. The greatest field and track spectacle in the U.S. since the 1932 Olympics as Russian and American track aces clash. In the women's 100 meters, it's long-legged Wilma Rudolph Ward who streaks away from the field to prove once more she is the fastest woman in the world. Two from each nation compete in every event, and it's a Russian who runs second. This is the fourth time the Soviets have met with the U.S. And in the men's 100-meter dash, Bob Hayes equals the meet record set in 1958. When Mr. Hayes gets going, the X-15 couldn't catch him. Ralph Boston runs up a record all his own as he beats the Russians for the fourth time with a leap of 26-9. As the U.S. rolls up a handy point lead, Hal Connolly contributes his bit as he sets a world mark in the hammer throw with 231 feet 10 inches. A mighty heave is that. The second day of the two-day meet sees attendance go over 150,000, and a program of thrills begins with the women's hurdles. The Russians prove too good for the U.S. duo as they run 1-2, Irina Press and Ilya Kuklova spark a Russian victory in the women's field events. But for the first time in four years, their margin of victory is narrow. Feature event of the day is the 1,500-meter run, the metric mile, and all eyes are on little Jim Beatty, co-captain of the American team. He's leading in the last lap with victory closer at every step. When need be, the mighty might has a reserve he seems to turn on at will. Cross to set a new American record as well as a new meat mark. Climax of the meat comes in the high jump. With everyone else out, Russia's Valerie Brummel goes over 7-1, 7-3, and finally 7 feet 5 inches for a new world's record. The high-flying Russian takes a new record home, but the U.S. takes the meat on points.